Many people have difficulties in reading sacred scriptures, and in fact, many of them doesn't know how to do it. But the church, as a mother, gives us a direction through a very ancient way of reading the Bible. It is called Lexio Divina, that means divine reading. And we can do it in five steps. First, reading, then meditation, prayer, contemplation, and resolution. To help you in this journey, we provided for you a compendium of Lexio Divina, which is a book, like a journal, containing all the references for daily reading for the whole liturgical year, and a place where you can write your meditation. In addition to that, there are beautiful meditations from our founder on the theme of this year, the glorious freedom of the children of God. By purchasing one of these books, you are helping our mission and growing in knowledge of God through the scriptures. Hello everyone, happy Sunday. I'm Sister Mary Elizabeth from Seas of the Word Community and I would like to welcome all of you that are joining us in this first Sunday of Lent, today, February 21st. And for the readings of this Sunday, we will be reading for the first reading Genesis chapter 9 verses 8 to 15. The responsorial psalm will be Psalm 25. Second reading is from the first letter of St. Peter, chapter 3, verses 18 to 22. And the gospel is from Mark, chapter 1, verse, verses 12 to 15. We can start the reading of the Word of God for this Sunday. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, as for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds and the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bowl, my bowl in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. And I bring clouds over the earth, and the bowl is seen in the clouds. I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the first reading today, we see this, we see Noah and his family and his sons his descendants, and God made a, made a promise to Noah. So if we remember in the beginning of the book of Genesis is the account of creation. God created man and woman to, to be husband and wife, to have kids and to start humanity. And, but then there, there came the sin. So after the fall, after the sin, man and woman wasn't in, un in union with God anymore. And the creation wasn't in union with God the Creator anymore. So man on earth is started to do what was wrong in the sight of the Lord. And that's what is said in the previous chapter. How creation, how humanity was doing wrong things in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord didn't find anyone who was worthy of the whole creation, but then he found Noah. And Noah was the only one that the Lord chose with his family, his sons and his daughters-in-law. And so Noah's family was the only ones chosen by the Lord to build the ark, to go into the ark, to endure the flood, the rain, that came for 40 days and 40 nights. But right after the flood and Noah, his family and the animals, God asked Noah to build the ark 
and to put in the ark a pair of every animal that was on earth. After the flood, it is this chapter that we see now, God make a new covenant with his people. He says, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants forever for the future generations. God made a covenant with his people that he would never destroy humanity again. But we see in this waters of the flood, a prefiguration of baptism. We see baptism in these waters of the flood. And we can see creation in it. So when we are born, we are this creation from God. But because of the fall, the first fall, we are born, we are born with sin, with original sin. But then baptism comes and cleanses us. But baptism comes and makes us this covenant with God. So we become children of God. So in this account of the flood and the promise that God gave afterwards to Noah and his family, we see the promises that we receive in baptism, that God will be always with us, that now we belong to his people. We have this intimate covenant with him. But St. Peter's in the second letter today, we will see that he also mentions that, that the waters of the flood in the time of Noah prefigured baptism. For the psalm today, the psalm says, make, to know, make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from a void. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. God, un, God, good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his ways. The Lord teaches the humble his ways. We need to be humble in the presence of the Lord. He's our Lord, our God, our Creator. And we need to be in His presence in humility. And He will teach us His ways. He will teach us His path. He will show us His salvation. Second reading from the first letter of St. Peter says, Christ suffered for our sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison. In former times, these did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, were saved through water. Baptism which is prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who was gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Again, St. Peter here is saying that Christ suffered sin for all of us once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous. We are the unrighteous ones, and Jesus is the, right, the righteous one. He is the one that came to, to cleanse us from our sins. And St. Peter says, baptism saves you. Baptism saves you. The waters of baptism saves us. The waters of baptism was given to us to save us. And it is beautiful that during this time of Lent, in the tradition of the church, is a time of the election of the people, of the catechumens, the people that will be baptized 
on Easter, that we baptized in the Easter vigil. So it's beautiful for us that are baptized to receive this reminder that baptism saves us. We were saved through baptism and we need always to, to seek this renewal or, of our baptism to being cleansed over and over again. Baptism saves us and Christ suffered for us. Christ made us sons and God and daughters of God. So, so beautiful to meditate that during this Lenten season. And the gospel today, the gospel of St. Mark, chapter 1, verses 12 to 15 says, After Jesus was baptized, the Spirit drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. He was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited him on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news and saying, This time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On this first Sunday of Lent, we sing the Gospel, Jesus being tempted in the desert. In Mark's account of the temptation, he tells only that Jesus was led into the desert by the Spirit and that for 40 days he was tempted by Satan. The Gospels of Matthew and Luke explain that Jesus fasted well in the desert. Then Satan presented him with three temptations and that Jesus refused each one quoting scripture. Only the Gospels of Matthew and Mark report that angels minister to Jesus at the end of this time in the desert. So we see that the Synoptic Gospels, they all talk about temptation in the desert. Matthew, Mark and Luke. But there are details, things that are special in the different Gospels. Mark does not mention that Satan Satan tempted Jesus with three temptations and Jesus refused. Jesus quoted sacred scripture to say no to those temptations. Mark doesn't say that. Mark only says that Satan, Satan tempted him. Mark also does not mention that Jesus fasted for 40 days. But he mentioned that the angels served him, that the angels were serving Jesus. But what is more interesting is after that, it says, right after the temptation, Jesus went proclaiming the good news and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God come near. Repent and believe in the good news. That's exactly the line that we heard on Ash Wednesday. Repent and believe in the good news. Repent and believe in the gospel. Lent is a time of repentance. Lent is a time where we, all the sacrifices that we make, the prayers that we do, is always to convert our hearts. To convert our hearts and our minds to be one with God. In the first reading and in the second reading today, they combine perfectly. We see this reminder of baptism. Baptism saves us. Baptism through baptism, we were cleansed from our sins. But then, that's not the end. Baptism is only the beginning. Like Jesus, we need to be strengthened in our spiritual life to be able to say no to Satan. To say no to Satan with the words of sacred scripture. To say no to his temptations. And to proclaim the good news. Jesus fasted for 40 days and this number 40 is very special and very significant in the Bible. 40 years they, that the Israelite wandered in the desert. 40 days and 40 nights that the prophet Elijah journeyed in the desert. 40 days and 40 nights 
that reigned in the time of Noah. And now we have this 40 days of Lent. The Lord wants us, wants us to join Him in this journey of salvation that is Lent. And this Sunday, He wants to remind us the importance of our baptism. But then, right after, that we will be tempted, that we will suffer, but we have Him on our side. So when you are doing your Lexia Divina today, pray about it, meditate about it. How baptism saved you, but now that you are an adult, you need to fight against temptation. You need to fight against Satan. You need to fight with your whole heart to be able to possess all the promises that the Lord has for you, that the Lord promised you. But remember that we need to repent and believe in the good news. May the Lord bless us on this Sunday. May He bless our sacrifice and our prayers. And may these 40 days of Lent be days of blessing in our lives. Amen.